Now, to be clear, mm -hmm. and I may be wrong on this, you don't diagnose people, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So you can look, though, at patterns in somebody's hormonal testings and kind of along with knowing their health history, help them get on the right path with their hormones. So explain yep. like your process and what you do. Most people present into our offices because they have some condition. They really do. They have some diagnosis and they ha usually have failed care. They've progressively get worse. Their doctor's not giving them answers. They're frustrated. And then we go, okay, listen, so let's just pick peace West because right now it's becoming a very dominant condition that roughly 10% of women across the world suffer from right now. Now, what that does now, well, you understand that there's going to be certain hormones that are dominant, so you're going to run those labs on there. And then what's going to do, you're going to see them and go, okay, listen, you already got a diagnosis piece of based on all your, your presentation to your doctors that way. But you got to remember, it's about finding out the hormones that are really being the major factor that are dictating and driving that. And then some of the lifestyle things that are even driving that even more. And then as you start to reverse those, and then here's the great thing. I think I mentioned to you not too long ago, um, people are always excited about testing. Uh, and I love testing. I think it's one of the greatest things. But I think retesting is even better because not only do you see the progress in the person as they present, if they present with PCOS, and then you start to see it starting to work backwards and start to go normal. And then they're, the patient's extremely excited because they'll go get another ultrasound. They'll go get some other testing done by their docs that they've been seeing for a long period of time. And then I'm excited about that change, but I'm like, hey, listen, nice seeing that pathology change. But I want to see how the labs go back to normal. Why do we always see people get told by their primary care doctors, there's nothing wrong with you. I don't see anything. But the patient is saying, I know something is wrong with me. Then they go see a doctor like you and you're like, yeah, something is wrong. Where's the yeah. disconnect? How come they're not finding what you are? But it's, it's really not a disconnect. Um, it's actually a very good thing. A lot of people come into our offices very frustrated. I mean, like really frustrated. And I'm like, no, 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 go back and thank your doctor. And they're like, what do you mean thank your doctor? I said, what do you think about this? If you look at what, if we, if we can understand what I do and what, you know, basically our current form of healthcare does. And I gave the example and you read it in my book. You know, I always tell people, you know, medicine's like the fire department. You know, if house catches on fire, you guess what happens? Let's call that disease. Let's say that could be cancer, it could be heart disease, something that your house is going to burn down. Just think, um, they're going to use their, the fire department, axes and hoses to put out. Now we know that when they do that process, there could be destruction through the process, but they're really saving house. Now people are left with a burnt up house. Well, we're the kind of people that can say, listen, we need to rebuild the house. So when somebody goes into a doctor, they're going to look for that fire. Okay. And so the people go, so the doctor is doing a wonderful job with all the technology. They're looking for all these pathologies and they ain't present yet. They're, they're just not, they're not present in their body. Yet those things happen to take years and years to develop. For example, I just posted some, a pretty good research article where they even talked about type 2 diabetes. You're, you will have hyperinsulinemia for 10 to 15 years before they'll even present that they'll record it as. So you couldn't even get the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes for a long period of time. And that's why when I first graduated 25 years ago, type 2 diabetes was called adult onset. And obviously it's migrated back lower and lower into teenage years now, so they had to change that. But the idea is diseases take such a long time to develop that by the time that they catch them, you understand you've been sick for a long period of time. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're just seeing the normal state that where the body's at. And if it's abnormal, guess what's going to happen? It's like this, you know, if all of a sudden, you know, like when I left Green Bay this morning, it was really cold. You know, if you decide to walk outside, you know, in a swimsuit during that time, your body's going to go into a fight or flight response. Um, now, there's no pathology relevant that's there. You don't see any disease, but guess what happens? Everything from your blood sugar to your blood pressure to your, you know, um, cortisol levels, and everything will change. And we'll look at a person and say, listen, got to get that change now because eventually it's going to lead to something bad. It could even lead, lead to something that blood pressure stays high for a long period of time to a stroke. But see, they don't do that. So it's just about checking those markers. They check for pathology. We're just making sure all the things, all the biochemistry and physiology is normal. Why is it important to understand that what is normal to somebody may not necessarily mean optimal when it comes to health? Well, they're kind of the same. They really are. Because, you know, for example, if you look at ranges for most hormonal labs, they're within them. It's just that what happens this. You can you can have a marker and let's say your thyroid can run from one to five. Well, guess what happens? Someone could be at a three, and even though it's in their normal range, but they might be better off two. And so as they start to get their body back normal, it starts going to two or 1.5. And then you can, then after measuring that for several years, you can start to tell, okay, what's more optimum for that person. Have you heard that 80% of people are pre-diabetic and have no idea? Yes. Yes. Um, and I would say that's probably on the low end. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, because once again, we, we remember we live in that fire department pathological end stage, wait till you fall apart kind of healthcare. And then people, once again, 
that it takes years and years to develop that way. It really does. And that's why if you ever look at the lab that we ran, we ran on well, the hormone test, you want to run a fast, fasting insulin. That can be elevated for many, 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 many years before there is any diabetic diagnosis. What are the most common hormonal problems that you see in people that have PCOS, infertility, or even premenopausal symptoms? Uh, quite simple. Estrogens, testosterone, progesterone levels are off significantly. And, um, and because, you know, women, the best thing they have for younger women is a form of birth control, which is a whole nother topic. Um, but the idea is this, is they try to do some hormone therapy. And you can, and because hormones fluctuate so much, trying to give a person the same dose all the time actually makes no clinical sense. 